十六年嘛。嗯，有的时候说我是小王或者是小丽。From overseas student to president, he has fond recollections of his time in Beijing studying and playing football. How did the stars align between him and China? Witnessing China's reform and opening up, and experiencing firsthand the country's people-centered development philosophy, how did he draw on China's experience to enhance his native country's economy? Former Ethiopian President Mulatu Teshime sat down for an exclusive interview with Leaders Talk. To Leaders Talk, where we meet leaders, thinkers, and trailblazers. I'm Zhou Yun. Our guest today is an old friend from Africa, who spent over a decade studying and working here in the country. After he was elected president in 2013, he chose China as his very first country to visit, and he is Mulatu Tshome, the former president of Ethiopia. As a witness of China-Africa relations, what is the outlook on the future of these bilateral relations? How does he think China's development approach is inspirational to other countries, and how he will continue his connection with China? Let's find all those answers from an interview with Mr. Tshome. Dr. Tshome, great honor to have you with us here on Leaders Talk. You refer to China as your second home. Well, given that you studied here in China for over Um, a decade. How does it feel every time you return? When I come to China, whenever I come, I feel like I'm coming back to my old house, my second home. The imprints I have about China, especially during my student years, is very deep. Right. I remember about my teachers, my classmates, Chinese, my Chinese.、Uh, Dorm mate, because I had the Chinese student、uh, to be、uh, my dorm mate to improve my Chinese and to help each other in our uh, in our uh, daily life and studies. So I remember all that. Of course, I do also remember、um, what Beijing looked like, what、um, the surroundings of. Peking University looked like then. When I、um, in 1976,、uh, really it had a very different shape and、uh, beauty. Of course, they, they, there was、uh, a beauty of itself.、Uh, so uh, when uh, I look into、uh, look from 1976 to 2023. It is over forty, near quite quite uh, uh, far, near to fifty years.、Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can you can imagine how big difference, how big、uh, change my schools, my my universities uh, have uh, have acquired. In 1976, fresh from high school, Mulatu Teshime came to China as an Ethiopian government-sponsored international student. It was on a government scholarship, and it was not easy to、uh, to get that that opportunity, that chance, because it was only for five students from from Ethiopia、uh, to be chosen among thousands of my peers who were.、Uh, High school graduates. It was、uh, my first trip abroad. The Beijing Language Institute, now known as Beijing Language and Culture University, was Mulatu Teshime's first destination. This is where he studied Chinese. Doctor Teshime, we want to show you something. I don't know whether you still remember this.、Oh. <laughs> so this is your student ID from Beiyu, Beijing, yes,、uh, Beijing Language let, let me, and Culture University.、See. Yes, please. Shilion Yam. Uh huh. That is Be- Beijing Yanshan. Because you studied in both、uh, Beiyu, Beijing、uh, yeah. Language Culture University, as well as Beida, Peking University,、yeah. all combined for over ten years.、Mm-hmm. And we have a special friend, actually, who prepared a surprise for you.、Uh, do you still remember and recognize her? 
Oh, she is my Chinese teacher. Yes, do you Wang still? Laoshi. Yes, Wang Laoshi, and she has um, asked us to send her wishes to you. Chu 而且你这个有这么大的抱负，所以你后来呢，呃，你当了总统，这是必然的，你做得很好。She was very strict to me, <笑> very strict. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when we started learning Chinese, I think we were obliged to memorize twenty characters a day for one first week. It increases uh, second week, maybe 30, third week, 50, like that. If I didn't finish my uh, memorization, she doesn't leave me. <laughs> and I can not go and play. Uh -huh. Okay? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, she was very caring, like uh, a mother, like a big sister. Mm -hmm. So when she's strict, she's strict. Now you cannot go out. Then we listen to her. Back then, you yes. spoke very fluent Chinese with her. That because even, of her. <laughs> because of her, thanks yeah. to her. Yeah. How much do you still remember the language, speaking Mandarin? I, I can speak. You can speak. Oh. <laughs> In 1977, Mulatu Teshime enrolled in the Department of Philosophy at Peking University and obtained his bachelor's degree in 1982. From 1985 to 1991, Mulatu pursued advanced studies in the International Relations Department, earning both a master's degree and then a doctoral degree. Just as Wang Lao she said, that at a very young age, but you still have this ambition and vision mm. to make your home country, Ethiopia, better off. So what do you think are the most important things from your studies here in China? And uh, what or how does those experiences uh, influence you in your political will or um, your philosophy of governance? You know, uh, the environment shapes you. Mm -hmm. I came to China for my college studies quite in a good time after uh, finishing my high school, mind was open to take any lesson, be it bad lesson or good lesson. Fortunately, I took the good lesson. So and so forth, uh, you come to visualize what you could contribute to society. And it was the environment I were in, really, which, uh, which uh, uh, helped me to mold me, and to shape me to be uh, servant of my country. Mm -hmm. So I have to thank Beijing Yuan Xuan and Beijing Daxue for that. What do you miss the most about these uh, good old days? Well, everything is, uh, you know, um, I, I can miss everything. Uh -huh. Playing football with my friends, uh -huh. you know, going uh, for fun, uh, uh, you know, socializing, this and that. Mm -hmm. But it was uh, beautiful when we were so young, but we cannot repeat it now. We cannot repeat it. Every, every that is why it is valuable, because you cannot go back, you cannot repeat it. It's yeah. once in a lifetime experience. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So in my 20s, there were uh, very old, golden, good days. Okay. But uh, however I liked it, Tanshina Gan Tongshi Ichi Zucho, whatever she wanted, Tizucho. 
我们在北大有个足球队，跟清华大学一起那个什么比赛，或者是呃人人大、人民大学，就我们附近的那一些大学，这些我特别喜欢。嗯，您是踢球场上的哪个位置呢？那前卫。前哇，那您跑跑的应该非常快的吧？当时。我我我踢球那个射门是比较好。您在中国前前后后加起来工作生活有十多年的时间。有有。您最爱中国文化或者中国人民的什么呢？说实话，中国的什么都喜欢。您有没有最喜欢的中国美食啊？我特别喜欢那个，呃，宫保鸡丁，因为那个呃有一点辣，呃四川四川菜的那那种，因为跟埃塞俄比亚那个口味是差不多的。In 1991, upon returning home after completing his studies, Mulatu joined the Ethiopian Ministry of Foreign Affairs with the rank of counselor. He later served as the Minister of Agriculture in Ethiopia. The Speaker of the House of Federation, and also as the ambassador to countries including China, Japan, Turkey, Azerbaijan, and others. In October 2013, Mulato was elected as the President of Ethiopia. After taking office, he actively drew on China's economic development experience. The first uh, official visit I had after uh, becoming President of Ethiopia was, as you said, uh, China. And when I met President Xi Jinping, definitely it was uh, an honor and very pleasing uh, for me. Dr. Toshomi, you've met with uh, President Xi before and uh, you've noted, quote, seeing sincerity, humility, optimism and vision as great qualities uh, in him as uh, the leader of this great country. Is there any interactions between you and President Xi that have left uh, a long-lasting impression on you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, as you rightly said, President Xi is leader of this great nation. But uh, when we had the talk, be it uh, uh, with my delegation or tete a tete, mm -hmm. he was taking Ethiopia and China from the same stage. Let us help each other, work together. I mean, Ethiopia is seeking a lot of assistance and help from China. And uh, President Xi was not only saying that uh, China can help you, can support you, but he was saying if we uh, cooperate, if we work together, we all benefit. We, Ethiopia can uh, come out of uh, this, uh, present day difficulties by its own people's hard work. So uh, humility definitely and uh, very, uh, uh, very sincere. You can uh, see from, you can read from one person's eyes, I saw all happiness in his eyes, mm -hmm. all uh, optimism, all uh, encouraging words. Uh, uh, because he was saying, you know, China was also, China has seen these difficulties. If we work hard, it will pass. Uh, you've previously mentioned gaining deeper understanding about China's uh, development approach from reading President Xi's book, The Governance of China. So can you share with us some of the highlights from your reading? Oh well, yeah, uh, actually when I look into it, uh, coming up with uh, correct policies and to uh, draw the policies from uh, objective realities of country, is very important. Mm -hmm. And it is not only having the right uh, policies, but that policy has to be people-centered. People has to be beneficiary. You have also praised China's development approach as example for Ethiopia. So in what way do you find China's um, approach and solution helpful and inspiring? Yeah, uh, you know, the objective realities China was in, and Ethiopia is in now, are different, totally different. Mm -hmm. And to learn from China's experience, mm -hmm. we cannot copy everything, but we can take a reference. Mm -hmm. 
And the good reference is what? It is to base our uh, planning, reasoning for our planning, you know, the development plan, we have got five years, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it can be three years for Ethiopia, it can be five years or ten years. But we have to be based on reasons, on objective realities of Ethiopia. Uh, one thing we can learn from China is be realistic, be people-centered, put the interests of the people as the center of your uh, plannings, mm -hmm. and uh, make sure that people benefit out of the reforms made. If people are not benefiting, still if poverty is not solved, then really it is not a true reform. In case of China, mm -hmm. I have seen the Chinese living standard of the 1970s, 1980s, till I left China as a student. Mm -hmm. I know most of Chinese people were very, very modest life. Everybody was on on bike, mm -hmm. but now I, what I see is maybe out of uh, 1,000 Chinese, maybe 300 are, have got vehicles. If I'm if I'm correct, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what the impression. So people benefited from the reform. People benefited from the modernization. So people will going to support this uh, the, the, their government. People and government work hand in hand. If people are not benefiting, then it's a lost case. Let's talk a little bit about uh, China, Ethiopia, bilateral relations, because the friendship between the two countries has been solid for decades. And in October this year, the bilateral cooperation, the bilateral relations between the two countries has been elevated to all weather strategic partner. So, Dr. Tashomi, what is your vision on the future of um, this uh, tie? Yes, China. Uh, and Ethiopia relations really proved to be the all-weather comprehensive strategic partnership mm -hmm. uh, relationship. It is not something which uh, the leaders of the two countries just wanted to give this adjective to Ethiopia-China relations. It is a reality. Let us skip the 1970s, uh, just uh, to uh, the very start of diplomatic relations, after the 1990s, really the relationship uh, of uh, our two countries became gradually on the increasing, uh, on the increasing curve. We started up you know, with uh, more of trade increment, be it uh, this, the figure is small, but still there was a trade to, to, uh, to talk about. Uh, there was uh, not yet investment as such. Uh, but uh, the government-to-government -government relations was extremely good. Party-to-party -party relations was mm -hmm. very good. Mm -hmm. And that opened the way, that cleared the way for uh, China and Ethiopia to understand each other. After the 2010s, even Chinese investors became very visible in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Many investment uh, investment opportunities were open for Chinese investors. Trade was increasing. Uh, actually, China and Ethiopia uh, became very important uh, as far as Ethiopia is concerned. China was its uh, biggest trading partner. Right. Uh, many Chinese restaurants in Ethiopia, especially in Addis Ababa, and uh, even medical facilities, clinics or hospitals by Chinese private private ones. Mm -hmm. And still we have uh, Chinese uh, medical units which are sent by the uh, Chinese government. That is a very big support for Ethiopia. And uh, this all uh, when, you know, added up, it gave a very heavy weight to Ethiopia-China relations. Mm -hmm. Politically, we, have, uh, we are in very good terms. Right. Diplomatic relations, excellent. And uh, mm -hmm. Ethiopia has got many uh, natural resources, which really are very important for the fourth industrial revolution, mm -hmm. like the lithium or uh, nickel, very, uh, very uh, important earth elements are found in Ethiopia. And we are looking forward to have uh, Chinese investors in that regard also. 
We have got you something from Ethiopia. It's the coffee. So this is uh, the coffee beans from Ethiopia. And also maybe you want to take a sip. Maybe it's a yeah. taste of home a little bit. So, you know, even though China is thousands of miles from your home country, Ethiopia, but the economic and trade ties, as you just mentioned, between the two countries is growing. Yeah. And that has made it possible for many high quality um, African products, including the Ethiopian coffee, to enter into the Chinese uh, market. So what do you think, Dr. Tuchome, is the key in further enhancing the economic and commercial cooperation between the two sides? Ethiopia has really a very big potential for uh, further development to grow and to industrialize. Uh, Ethiopia has uh, human talent, human resources, natural resources, mm -hmm. but um, that, that is not well connected. Uh, through investment and uh, technical cooperation, scientific cooperation between China and Ethiopia, I think we can bring a, a big change. Uh, when we cooperate, it is for mutual benefit. So we want uh, Chinese investors also to be uh, profitable, to get a very good return on their investment, so that Ethiopia benefits. Well, over the past years, the uh, projects under the Belt and Road Initiative, such as uh, the uh, Addis Ababa Djibouti Rail, has brought tangible benefits to the industrialization and urbanization along the road. So, Dr. Tushome, how do you interpret the significance of this uh, initiative? You know, the Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway, it really opened a very good corridor for Ethiopia's uh, modernization. If Ethiopia concentrates to open up industrial zones or uh, free trade zones along the railway corridor from Addis to Djibouti, over six, maybe six, seven hundred kilometers, that's a very big railway corridor. That is still waiting. That is uh, what we are thinking to have. And the surrounding is uh, the very rich, fertile lands for ag developing ag agriculture. Agricultural products can be processed into modern industrial uh, inputs and uh, can, can be a source of Ethiopia's growth, especially in agricultural export. But ex it has to be value added. Value addition is extremely uh, important. For example, we produce cotton. If cotton is, uh, if Ethiopia is exporting raw cotton, nobody is benefiting. But if the cotton is processed in Ethiopia to the extent of uh, going to textile and garment, definitely many uh, stages of value addition is there. Uh, many Ethiopians, many Chinese investors can benefit out of it and our two countries also can benefit out of it. But there has been some accusations, accusations that I think you have also heard about those projects have left uh, some African countries settled with debts or with uh, strings attached. How would you respond uh, to those um, accusations? No, I, I, I totally don't agree. I know some people say, yes, I mean, they don't give a penny to Africa. They don't give a penny to investment financing, especially for uh, important projects like road or railway or port development. But uh, when we get it from China, they say, no, you are going to be debt trapped. <laughs> but if that, it is not debt trapping really. We need the project, but we don't have money. Mm -hmm. And uh, whoever gives us the money to develop our country, the debt, yes, it is debt for today, but we, we can pay it back tomorrow. Because there will, we, we, we are hopeful that we can uh, make the projects to develop into the, into, to become uh, profitable. If there is profit, that, that means we have extra money to pay our debts. And Ethiopia is going to become a full member of uh, the BRICS starting next year. So how do you think Ethiopia's accession to this bloc will not only benefit its own development, but also how it's going to impact the South-South uh, cooperation? Ethiopia is uh, really very much grateful for uh, being accepted 
to be a member of BRICS. You know, Ethiopia can uh, benefit from the, the cooperation uh, which it is going to have with China, with uh, India, with Russia, with Brazil, all the BRIC, former BRIC countries. And it also will, uh, will bring other BRIC countries together to be in a block. First of all, to assist each other in terms of investment, especially investment is very much where Ethiopia is looking to. It can be a source for expansion of trade. And uh, it can be for uh, technical or scientific supporting uh, of each other. So Ethiopia is definitely going to benefit out of it. And uh, that also will increase Ethiopia's, Ethiopia's uh, posture, Ethiopia's position in Africa and uh, globally, I think. And how would you evaluate the role of China in helping to support and maintain the peace and stability of the uh, African continent? Yeah, China's policy towards Africa or towards the developing world is very clear. China never intended to intervene in any other country's internal affairs. You know, all African countries, what they say is, they need China's assistance because Chinese assistance is not attached to any trigger. But in the case of China, really there is no any condition attached to the assistance or cooperation uh, given to African countries or any developing country. Only friendship. So in our interview, can you use the Chinese language to the Chinese audience and to your Chinese friends? I wish to the Chinese people God and Shinfu, or Ju Jung Haramingu Hago, the Lilian Villa Chang, or A Shiva, I saw a beer, a Chungo de Yoi, Yong Yuan. Okay, Dr. Shome, it was a really a great pleasure talking to you. It was really touching to hear all those uh, really impressive stories that you had, this very special bond you have with China, and also your very insightful views on Bella relations and uh, global issues. Greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. During the interview, Mulatu Tashome was straightforward about his admiration and passion for China. He attributed China's rapid development to the effective policies of the Chinese government and looked forward to seeing even stronger relations between China and Africa. With that, we're going to wrap up this edition of Leaders Talk. I'm Zhou Yun reporting from Guangzhou. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.